Alarms echo through the bridge as radar screens bloom with incoming signatures. A U.S. carrier group moves into high alert. Interceptors launch from surrounding destroyers. Electronic warfare systems flare to life. Seconds later, confident voices fill the combat information center. Threat neutralized. The crew exhales. The battle seems won. Then, a new trace flashes across secondary radar. A low, fast anomaly moving at impossible speed. A whisper of disbelief quiets the room. A Zircon missile is inbound. How did America's most advanced shield miss it? Russia's 3M22 Zircon represents a radical leap in weapons design. First test fired publicly in 2002, it travels at speeds nearing Mach 9, over 6,800 miles per hour. At those velocities, traditional intercept windows collapse to mere heartbeats. The missile's flight path is unpredictable, weaving through the atmosphere before diving at low altitude toward its target. During its journey, it generates so much heat that a plasma field forms around its body, obscuring it from radar and infrared sensors. Unlike older anti-ship missiles such as the Harpoon or Caliber, Zircon doesn't rely on stealthy cruising or extended approach time. It compresses the engagement sequence into seconds, forcing defenders to react faster than their sensors can process. For carrier groups that rely on multi-layered defenses built to counter slower subsonic or even supersonic threats, Zircon changes everything. It doesn't need to strike deep. It just needs to reach striking range before detection. Behind its creation lies a strategic purpose. Moscow viewed carriers as the ultimate expression of American naval might, able to project power thousands of miles from home. The Zircon was intended to challenge that concept directly creating a weapon so swift, so evasive, that it could bypass even the most intricate defensive grid. Each test launch wasn't merely an engineering milestone, it was a message. Yet the decisive contest would depend not only on speed, but on whether the defender's technology could keep up. Every U.S. carrier battle group operates as a mobile fortress. At its core sits the aircraft carrier, massive, valuable, and vulnerable. Surrounding it are escorts, Ticonderoga-class cruisers, and Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, all networked through the Aegis combat system. Surveillance aircraft orbit high above, while satellites keep eyes on distant horizons. This network forms a living web designed to detect, track, and destroy any threat long before it nears the fleet. The first layer stands hundreds of miles out. SM-3 interceptors target high-altitude ballistic threats, while SM-6 missiles guard against fast maneuvering targets. If anything breaches that line, the evolved Sea Sparrow missiles engage at mid-range. The final backup, the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, sprays a wall of tungsten at anything that slips through. Each layer feeds real-time data into Aegis, an integrated battle management brain capable of autonomously assigning weapons and prioritizing targets. After decades of refinement and thousands of live fire tests, this system gave the U.S. Navy unmatched confidence. It was designed to fight multiple simultaneous threats, planes, drones, cruise missiles, and win. But the hypersonic era introduced physics beyond its design envelope. In a theoretical engagement, the scenario unfolds smoothly at first. Early warning satellites catch a distant launch flash. Aegis correlates the signal and assigns interceptors. Within seconds, SM-6 missiles streak skyward. Monitors show successful engagement probabilities. Commanders issue confirmations. Threat neutralized. But as the intercept radar resets for another scan, something unusual appears. The returning wave is garbled, fragmented. Operators think it's atmospheric interference, or perhaps clutter from the destroyed target. Moments later, a second radar feed, operating on a different frequency, picks up a new return. It's faint, low altitude, and moving faster than any known missile. The Zircon's plasma cloud has masked it until now. This is where the shield begins to fail. During the transition from high-altitude intercept to low-level defense, radar handoff creates a momentary data gap. A system calibrated for predictable missile arcs struggles to adapt to erratic hypersonic dive profiles. That fraction of a second becomes the opening Zircon needs. 
electronic decoys confuse sensors, delaying recalibration. By the time phalanx guns track in, the projectile is already too close, its shockwave strong enough to cripple sensors even without a direct hit. The defense, once thought impenetrable, now faces a threat faster than the process built to stop it. The moment Zircon broke through the radar veil, the entire combat information center shifted from confidence to chaos. Data streams flooded the Aegis consoles, conflicting readings, inconsistent altitude reports, and heat signatures that blinked in and out. The operators, trained for methodical engagements, were now forced into improvisation. The countdown to impact had already begun, though no one could see it ticking down on the main screen. The first problem was time. At Mach 9, Zircon closed the final 100 miles in under 30 seconds. That gave the U.S. Navy's most advanced network less time to calculate, respond, and fire than it takes a human to read a sentence. A single miscalculation meant the intercept window was gone. The next problem was physics itself. As the missile screamed back into denser atmosphere, friction generated an enormous sheath of plasma. This heat bubble bent radar waves and blinded electro-optical tracking sensors. The plasma glare looked like a rolling cloud of energy, impossible to pinpoint. For the Aegis system, it appeared as a blur, a contact, then nothing. To missiles guided by radar homing, it was the equivalent of fighting a phantom. Then came the engagement miscalculation. The initial interceptors, SM-6 missiles, had already expended their energy arcs chasing decoys or misinterpreting data. By the time the system realized the real threat was still inbound, the handoff to shorter range layers was too late. ESSM crews fired on half-formed tracks, their guidance solutions drifting just behind Zircon's unpredictable maneuvers. In the last seconds, close-in defenses spun to life. The phalanx turrets tracked the incoming blur, laying down streams of tungsten rounds. But kinetic reality outpaced machinery. Zircon entered the engagement zone, traveling almost three miles every second. Even at full sensor resolution, the weapon's path bent unpredictably, zigzagging through atmospheric pressure layers designed to defeat predictive algorithms. Inside the command center, voices overlapped, target lost, reacquiring, were saturated, Confirm visual, impact predicted 0, 0 The human factor became as critical as the hardware. Operators had seconds to interpret contradictory data, commanders had less time to authorize responses, and the automated sequences lagged just enough for the missile to exploit the gap. When Zircon crossed the final defense radius, it didn't need a direct hit. The kinetic energy alone, its mass multiplied by its speed, created a shockwave equivalent to several tons of high explosive. The radar masts shuddered, deck sensors momentarily went black, and the electromagnetic pulse overloaded local circuits. A single near miss neutralized the fleet's electronic coordination. Saturation attacks multiply this effect. A coordinated launch of several hypersonic weapons could produce overlapping plasma shadows, fragmenting radar recognition. Tracking algorithms built around sub-hypersonic patterns were never designed to decode this level of chaos. What looked like isolated interference was actually a deliberate tactic. Information warfare conducted at nine times the speed of sound. Within seconds of the first impact burst, the scenario had shifted from controlled defense to survival. The battle group didn't lose ships outright, but its combat network was blind, its communication lattice fragmented. For the first time in modern naval history, America's decisive edge, its ability to manage information faster than anyone else, had been neutralized by velocity alone. The crew watched static dance across their screens, realizing that power now belonged to whoever could think in milliseconds. The hypothetical engagement forced naval strategists to confront a new truth. Speed had broken their doctrine. In simulations presented afterward, analysts confirmed that hypersonic weapons erased the reaction buffer at the core of American sea power. The traditional belief in invulnerable carriers no longer held. The immediate response was strategic, not emotional. The Navy began reviewing concepts once deemed unnecessary, distributed maritime operations, smaller task forces scattered across wide distances. By decentralizing command and broadening detection networks, the loss of a single node would no longer silence the entire battle group. Survival now depended on adaptability, not armor. 
technologists turned to sensors first. Radar arrays had to evolve beyond single-frequency scans. Artificial intelligence modules were integrated into Aegis to predict irregular flight paths in real time, reducing the lag between detection and intercept commands. Some prototypes linked ship radars directly to airborne early warning drones, forming a moving anti-hypersonic perimeter. New intercept solutions followed. The SM-6 program began testing updated guidance algorithms capable of endgame maneuvering at extreme speeds. At the same time, directed energy weapons entered development, solid-state lasers and electromagnetic railguns designed to bypass reload times entirely. These systems aim to convert electrical power into sustainable defense, countering velocity with precision rather than mass. Electronic warfare expanded as well. Instead of tracking the missile, engineers considered targeting its plasma sheath, using high-energy radio bursts to distort its navigation sensors or trigger premature dives. The Navy also explored rapid decoy drones that could mirror the heat and radar signature of the carrier itself, spreading uncertainty across approaching missiles targeting data. Beyond the hardware, doctrine changed. Carrier strike groups began rotating patrol formations more frequently, varying radar habits, and employing autonomous support craft to extend their perimeter. The focus shifted from stopping every missile to ensuring that one strike would never paralyze an entire fleet. Geopolitically, the confrontation reshaped deterrence. Russia's success in developing hypersonic technology prompted other nations, China, the United States, even regional powers, to accelerate similar programs. The arms race no longer revolved around nuclear tonnage or stealth aircraft. It revolved around who could process information faster than a weapon could move. Naval supremacy, for decades founded on tonnage and armor, was suddenly measured in milliseconds. For the U.S. Navy, victory now meant surviving the first wave long enough to fight the second. And every test, every countermeasure, carried echoes of that simulated defeat, the moment when a single flash on radar rewrote how the sea would be contested. The instant zircon blurred across the sensors, it signaled more than a failed defense. It marked the beginning of a new era where machines, not humans, would dictate the tempo of warfare. The illusion of total protection vanished in under a minute. From that day, the Navy's doctrine evolved around one immutable principle. Nothing outruns perception. Every early success story reminds strategists of that simulated victory call, celebrated seconds before data screens went dark. It's a warning encoded into training programs and ship design. Dominance isn't permanent, and confidence evaporates at Mach 9. The sea still belongs to power, but power now depends on who sees first, thinks faster, and reacts within slivers of time once invisible to human command. If you want to see how the United States is adapting to this hypersonic era, with next-generation interceptors, stealth carriers, and AI-driven shields, watch our next feature. Subscribe to Military Air for more untold stories shaping the future of defense.